Bra, 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 bra. What's up, everybody? <laughs> Thanks for clicking this video. Thanks for tuning into my channel. My name is Simon Hill, Black American from Louisiana, coming to you live from Budapest, Hungary, and I'm here with my beautiful wife. Say hi, boo. That was a wild entrance. Um, yeah, I'm Acti, everyone. I'm from Turkey, and today we are reviewing the movie Elephant, yes, directed is- by Gus Van Sant. Yes, this is a 2003 psych drama slash black comedy film from the United States of America talking about one of our great cultural practices, mass shootings at schools, where we sacrifice our young, hot, next generation to our God, which is the gun. It's actually a really great movie that was requested by our longtime subscriber, follower, Nelson Moreno out of Portugal. And if he happens to join, I would love to get his take on it. But we watched this film about a week ago, and I could say, you know, I enjoyed it while watching it. And I watched it again this morning, and I can say uh, I've never laughed so hard. But how did you feel about uh, this film after we watched it? Yeah, I have to say I went into this movie totally blind. Like, I didn't know what it was about. And from, like, the vibes of it, if you look at the poster, it feels like a teenage romance or something. Mm-hmm. So I was expecting, oh, like maybe coming of age, romantic, whatever. And because I went in so blindly, I did not understand that it was about mass shootings until like the, you know, after the half of the movie, mm-hmm. I got it. Yeah. And I didn't know if you knew it about it, but because I went in so blindly, it also made it like better. Yeah. Because it's, it made me think like, oh, wow, this movie is giving that great uh insight on you never think you're gonna die you never yeah. think you're gonna be in a mass shooting and i definitely felt that going into this movie yeah just looking at who the director was gus van sant by his name alone you would think this was like some weird indie like dutch or danish like filmmaker who said i want to come to america and make a movie about the mass shootings but gus van sant is actually like from louisville kentucky so <laughs> this wow. film is like you know it's based it's coming from a real genuine place you know it's it's an american story told from american eyes and it feels very uh very true to its roots right so i appreciate that about gus van sant and uh yeah to be honest On my channel, I've talked a lot about mass shootings, the gun culture in America, uh, the white supremacist death cult uh, that Americans seem to all be a part of and all seem to be on the same page about. And uh, to be frank, though, I had not seen any real movies about school mass shootings. I can only think of the movie Rampage that we watched a few years Mm -hmm. ago. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. But I don't think it was a school mass shooting. No, it was just a general slaughter the town. Uh, yeah, a shooting movie, right? Which is yeah. also an issue in America because we have those uh, random acts of violence that can occur at any time. But I think uh, it's important to make films about school shootings uh, so that the issue can be uh, uh, made made more public, right? What do you think about that? Should they make films like this? Because this film inspired like some kid in Argentina to like shoot up a school and a few other kids uh, to like take you know, violence out on the world. What do you think about that? Uh, yeah, I've seen like those critiques about this movie saying it sort of glorifies the shooters because they make them seem like, I don't know, cool, cool and scary and things like that. Uh, but I think like, yes, it is important. And I think movies should be made about school mass shootings uh, because like y'all got to learn from it and not, like do something to stop it right but it's also like a very sensitive topic you have actual victims or people might go through the same thing and you know it should be very delicate and about this movie i think it was delicate enough but once again like you if you have art if you have media not everyone is going to interpret it the same way Mm -hmm. can't really control that And the thing is, like, yeah, maybe those kids saw this movie and then did something in Argentina or wherever, but they probably had those twisted ideas already. Yeah. Yeah, my opinion is, like, people should be able to make films about whatever they want. If they can make a Serbian film where somebody fucks a baby, right, why not make a film about school mass shootings, something that's very real? I'm not worried about people doing copycat 
killings because they saw the film Elephant, however they did, because we can see easily online people doing mass shootings and tragedies all the time, like Peyton Gendron's mass shooting where he walked into a Buffalo supermarket and slaughtered 10 black people is something that I see almost every day when I start perusing the 4chans and 8chans and Twitter and things like that. So who cares mm-hmm. if they make a film about it? Because you can see death anywhere online. Like death is now democratized in the digital age. Yeah, definitely. And also like just talking about mass shootings, there are a lot of mass shootings that happen almost every day in America. So like you said, it's easy to see that. And if you make a movie about it, at least you say something about it. Like you criticize it and you say, hey, like, look, there's something wrong with the system. Right, right. Let me ask you this question. How many school shootings have happened in your country of Turkey? Uh... I don't think there was any. <laughs> Almost zero, right? How many mass shootings happen in Turkey every year? Or how uh, many mass shootings do you think there have been since the year 2000? N- not not a lot. Maybe like, I'm I'm sure it's like less than 10 or even less than 5. And in Turkey, there are still murders, right? Of course. There, but, there are murders almost every day, but not mass shootings. Right, right. I just want to give some statistics out there for people that don't know. In the U.S., in just the year 2020, in just the year 2024, pardon, there have been 471 mass shootings. And a mass shooting is when four or more people are shot, even including the shooter. Since the year 2013, there have been 6,427 mass shootings. And how many days since the last mass shooting in America? Zero. Most recently, September 28th, uh, 2024, Washington, D.C., one person dead, three injured from gunshots. In Chicago, Illinois, zero people died before people were shot. And anytime somebody is shot, that is a tragedy. You don't know if that person is paralyzed. You don't know if that person will have PSD, PTSD, whatever. Los Angeles, California, six people were shot, five women and one man wounded. And the gunman is still on the run. Chicago, Illinois, one person dead, six people injured. And uh, in Birmingham, Alabama, four people dead and 17 injured. And that was on September 21st, 2024. That's just in the past week or so. In the past week or so, well over a dozen, more than a dozen people have been shot in just the past week. Sorry, mm-hmm. I'm ranting. Uh, no, I had those to... numbers are crazy, though, like 6,000. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. No, no, not 6,000. I didn't say 6,000, oh, more than okay. a dozen. And I just went through the, oh, but 6,000 since 2013? Yes, that's what I was saying. Oh, okay. I I thought you meant like 6,000 in a week. Though that could be very possible. Trust me, it is very, very possible, right? Somebody somebody really wants to run the numbers up, they can. Uh, Speaking of numbers, by the way, there's a great Wikipedia page that tallies up and counts and documents every single mass shooting that has happened at a school just from the year 2000 because they have to separate the millennia. So since the beginning of this millennia, right, and I had to really slap chat GPT up and down to make the numbers all run together. But in total, in total, from the year 2000 to 2024, there have been 141 school mass shootings. And that's not counting like a guy who's mad at his boss at a school and shoots the principal or shoots his ex-wife at a school. That's not even counting those things. The total number of kids and adults who have died at school, and I don't even believe this number because chat GPT, I had to slap it around to get it together, but the total number of people dead is 251 in school mass shootings in the United States. And the total number of people wounded at schools in America is 452 from the year 2000 to 2024. Mm. Wow. So I just, want, I just want those numbers out there because recently on my channel, my dad jumped into my comments and tried to shade me Because I called the way Americans think about guns uh, cult-like and a cult that is based on white supremacy because the way that guns were distributed to Americans was solely based on policing the people who were formerly enslaved. They deputized every single white man to say that you can have a gun and you need to police these free black people that are now running over the country. It was illegal for black men to be able to own guns for a long ass time. And and nobody has suffered at the hands of gun violence more than black people in America, whether that be from the white supremacists or whether that be from ourselves in other countries where they have crime, issues of poverty, issues of marginalization and racialization. 
they do not have the numbers that back that that even come close in any other in any universe. There is no country that even comes close to the amount of bloodshed that floods the streets in America, all at the hand of the gun. And I had to just get that out there. Yeah, no, those are facts. And I think like America, for me, someone who's like an outsider to this American gun culture, right? It just feels like they need to like shift that mentality where they see guns as protection because guns are not protection <laughs> and they are the actual weapons who are killing Americans. Um, so I think that that sort of mindset to me, like is still crazy. I don't think I will ever understand it. I don't think ever I will. I, and I don't think like any other nation sees it that way either. Right. So right. But that's just like that mentality. Can I, but can I really put on my American hat right now, acting? Go ahead. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. The gun keeps us safe. The gun makes us free. If I don't have a gun, a bad guy with a gun can do whatever they want to me, my property, my children, and my family. I need the gun. You do not understand. Yeah, but that's the thing. Like, if you don't have guns around the country, then the bad guys wouldn't be able to find guns as they do right now. No, like, no, because bad guys, <laughs> bad guys don't care about the law. If the law says you can't have a gun, the criminal don't care about the law because by nature, he's a criminal. Well, motherfucker, <laughs> if you don't sell guns at Kmart for $100, you won't be able to get it as easily as you can. You would have to go to fucking black market or whatever. And then kids, like how it is an elephant, for example... Kids won't able to get to guns that easily because they would need parental permission and sorts all sorts of things to get it. You so. don't understand. You don't understand. I had guns. My daddy had guns. My granddaddy had guns. And we never shot nobody. We never killed nobody. We're law-abiding citizens. Why should I give up my right, my God-given constitutional right to have a gun when I never did anything just because some stupid kids want to shoot up a school every single year? Who cares? I'm not doing anything wrong. Yeah, but like, what if a stupid kid in your child's school, for example, if you had a child, uh, goes in a rampage and kills your kid or some crazy nut gun freak uh, comes into a supermarket and kills your mother, your wife, your sister, then like, it's going to be your problem. And the gun that you have in the house is going to be pointless where the guns that these people can reach is like the crucial part of their plan. I find it absolutely disgusting that you would politicize and make a, make a point, make a political point about my child's death, a hypothetical death. How dare you say that? You are disgusting. You are saying that if my child died, that that somehow that makes the gun responsible. What is wrong with you? You are sick. You need Jesus Christ. Oh my what are God. you saying? I can't deal with people like this. They are they are just like they cannot see the problem. This is what I mean by the mentality. What are you saying? If if my child goes to school and gets, what are you saying? Stop making this so political. Whenever shootings happen, we need to think about it and pray about it. And, it is and, political if it's happening every there, every day, everywhere, and it's killing a lot of people. That that is political because then what is politics about if it's not going to care for the people of the country? Well, if you really want to make it political, let's just do this. We need more police in schools. We need metal detectors in schools. We need bulletproof glass between the students and the teachers. We need see-through backpacks where we can see what the students are carrying inside. We need bulletproof backpacks so students have protection. And most importantly, we need teachers packing heat in class. Yes, your seventh grade geography teacher needs a Glock in her pants. Wow. Uh, yeah, that's pointless because you can build more schools with that sort of funding that you would spend on bulletproof stuff and on, on the police. Like you can just ban the guns and then with that funding and with that money, you can build more schools, better education, more qualified teachers, maybe even free healthcare and free education. You know, what, what are you talking about? <clears throat> we, what are you talking about? What, this isn't just a problem based around the gun. What are you talking about? Canada has school shootings, right? Does it? 
France has school shootings, right? Uh, I don't, I, I mean, maybe they do, but may, it's probably like one or two a year where yeah. you oh, guys. See, they got one. See, they have one. We have 400. What's the difference? It, yeah. a, a, a situation will happen regardless, right? In Italy, they have school shootings, right? The difference is quantity. Like y you in your country, I don't know, 120 kids g got, get killed every day, every year. While in other countries, that number is much lower. But, but a kid being killed anywhere is just a big, big of a deal, right? So who cares if in Italy or France or Germany or Spain, one kid gets killed a year in a school. Meanwhile, in America, we have 400. They're equally the same as importance, right? So it's not an issue about the gun. No, they're not equally the same because if the number is higher, then there are more families being affected by it, more people being affected by it. Yeah, the every single one has the same importance, maybe, because, yeah, a kid is dying, which is very sad. But at least America can do something about it to stop it by abolishing guns. No, where no, In no. other countries, they already don't have easy ac access to guns, so it's, like, more rare. Acti, don't you know, guns don't kill people, people kill people. Don't you know this? This is so basic. You are so <laughs> out of it. This is why we are the greatest nation. This in conversation America. is insane. Because we think with logic. Acti, if you banned all the guns, people would still kill, kill people. Don't you know this? Yeah, it's harder to kill 15 people in at one time with a butter knife. Well, who kills people with a butter knife? You can't kill nobody with a butter knife. Trust me. I yeah, try. even if you have a freaking, like, butcher's knife, you can't kill 15 people all at once because as soon as you swing it once, people are going to stop you. Listen, Acti, it's not about the guns. It's about the people. And we need more mental health treatment because in, don't you know, in Portugal, they got mass shootings, Right? Right. I think so. Yeah, but you saying, I'm, of course you need no, mental no, health treatments. No, no, of course treatments. not. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't no. have mass shootings, of You're course saying, you silence, stop. You're saying like, okay, well, we'll give free cocaine and crack to everyone, <coughs> but we'll give them therapy at the same time so they won't be addicts. Like, that makes no sense. If you give them the tools to do it and then you just give them, like, therapy, that makes no sense. You have to take away the tools, too. I hear what you're saying, but cocaine for everybody actually sounds like a pretty good idea. Stop. <laughs> By the way, my guy Nelson just jumped in. What up, Nelson? Uh, what up? Thanks for having me. Have a good, uh, good day. Good day, good day, good day. I think you probably just woke up, right? More or less. More or less. All right. But we're over here talking about the film Elephant. We didn't even really get into the movie yet. We're just having a debate about guns, right? And I'm going super American, defending the gun. But uh, I wanted to know, like, after watching this film, whenever you watched it, did it make you think differently about the gun culture in America, about the school shootings that continue to happen? Like, what was your reaction after seeing the film? Well, um, I am pro-guns. Because I think there will be like a race war, and I think people should be <laughs> ready for the race war. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I think uh, when I watched the movie, for most of the movie, I didn't know it was about a school shooting. I thought it was like a, a chill movie about teenagers or something like a coming of age movie. Then it, like then it totally co caught me off guard, right? And I think mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, it's the guns, of course, but it's not only the guns, it's about, like, I don't know, the weird, like, culture of, I don't know, it's like a lack of connection or empathy that's going on, and obviously the guns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think the film does a really good job of showing, like, that weirdness of being, like, 15, 16, whatever, in high school, right? Like, there is that alienation from certain people, the awkwardness in your relationships, and all that sort of stuff, right? Is it the same in, like, high schools where you came from? Like, you know, being in high school is, like, a weird sort of age? Ah, uh, yeah, for sure, you know. I think it's, like, pu puberty stuff. I think it's all the same, I think. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, 
yeah, in this school, we sort of have like the different sort of clicks. Like we have like the, the preppy, you know, um, preppy popular girls, the jocks, uh, kind of the nerds, uh, photograph geeks, whatever, whatever. Like, uh, in your high schools, did they have those same sort of like differentiations between people? Oh yeah, of course, of course, you know. Yeah. There's the hot girl, the tot, there's everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And actor, what about you? Like coming up in high school, like watching I was the tot. <laughs> you were th- <laughs> <laughs> And actually like growing up and coming up in high school there where there's those same sort of distinctions. Did you see a lot of similarities between your high school experience and how they showed it in this film? Uh, yeah, I mean, a little bit, of course, in Turkey, Turkish high schools, we also have popular kids and just normal kids and then losers, I guess, uh-huh. uh, you know, in quotation marks, but we don't have like the groups as in like jocks, you know, dancers, bulimics and, uh, yeah, geeks. We don't really have that, but we just have like popular and non-popular kids. I see. I see. And what makes somebody popular? Because... I don't know if you guys have like sports teams the same way we do in the U.S. Like we have the football team, baseball team, volleyball team, and the people that are usually on those sports teams are considered the popular kids. I mean, it depends. I guess it's like looks plus personality plus mm-hmm. maybe economics as well. Mm-hmm. Like if you're pretty and you know, you're fun, funny, and you're also rich on top of it, you're probably going to be like the popular kid, mm-hmm. I would say. But yeah. yeah, like you could be the class clown and be the popular kid as well. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I think now's a good time to like jump into breaking down this film. So let's get into it. So the movie like opens up with this car driving and swerving down the street and it's like running into other cars and hedges and, and damn near running into cyclists. And you would think, at least I did, you know, you would think that the person driving this car is like a teenager or like some badass group of kids, but it's actually the adults. And this is when we're introduced to John, who is one of the main characters of this film, though technically he's sort of like a side character, but he's, you know, kind of uh, central to the story. He's this kid with like really bleach blonde uh, hair and like wearing this elephant t-shirt, no, a t-shirt with a bull on it, a yellow shirt with a black bull on it. I don't know if there's a metaphor there, but um, yeah, basically his father is a drunkard. And he tells his dad, you know, give me the keys. I'm going to drive. And his father is like, hey, let's go hunting this weekend. And he's like slurring his speech and talking about this rifle he got from World War II. And, uh, yeah, John is like, yeah, uh uh-huh, sure, uh uh-huh, whatever. Uh, John makes it to school. And uh, you could tell that probably he's been getting in trouble a lot because the principal walks up behind him and knows his name and says, in my office, John. Uh, And John is like – on the phone with like his brother to come and pick up his father who is in the car in the front of the school and like passed out drunk. I wanted to know what you thought about John when you were first introduced to him. Let's go to Nelson. What'd you think? Uh, I thought he was kind of cool. And and now that you like describe what happened, I think it's kind of, um, it's like uh, an analogy of about the movie about irresponsible uh, uh, figures, like um, uh, authority figures. I mm-hmm. guess that's part of it. Yeah, and John seemed like, you know, uh, a cool little teenager or something. Yeah. That listens to yeah. Nirvana. <laughs> yeah, definitely. He knows every <laughs> word to, uh, yeah, teen spirit. Acti, what did you think? Yeah, uh, I, I kind of had like the similar reaction to John with, uh, with Nelson. He was like a, a bit grunge and obviously he had like some fami- f- family problems and things like that. And I thought he was going to be like the main character of the movie uh-huh. and the story was going to be centered around him. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's how they sort of like build it and put it together. What I thought about it after watching it the second time is like, once again, going back to guns, John and his father are talking about going hunting and they're trying and the father is trying to bond over a rifle. And I think that goes to show like how the gun culture is sort of ingrained in America, like of course, people don't just want to have guns for self-defense. A lot of people say we want them so we can go duck hunting, fish hunting, deer hunting, whatever, stuff like that, right? And so I just thought about that part. And uh, also sort of like the disconnect his dad had because his dad is like a boomer. And, uh, you know, I guess John is like a Gen X kid or whatever. And a lot of the boomers, like, it's it's – it's cool to hate on boomers now, but for good reason, because boomers have no purpose for their existence. 
And so the wow. father, <laughs> the father, <laughs> the father here is just like a drunk man on his ass who is able to accumulate ungodly amounts of wealth just because he was born at the right time. So it's like, yeah, like, like Nelson said about the failure of authority, like our authority figures just, just suck, especially if they're boomers, you know? Mm, what I mean? Yeah. And you can't really do anything about it if they're in your family and you're a teenager. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but then after that, we are introduced to another character, uh, Nathan and Carrie and Nathan. No, sorry. We're introduced Elias. to Elias. Yes. Elias is like this photographer guy who like takes pictures of kids all around school. Right. And, um, for some reason, everybody's on Elias's dick. Like Elias goes anywhere and like hoes come up to him and say, Hey, Elias. Hey, what you doing later? Elias is like, you know, uh, uh, developing photos and stuff and girls are like trying to creep up close, but Elias always like stays distant and cool. I was wondering why is everybody on Elias's jock so hard just for taking photos? I don't know. And he's like the, the guy, the guy that everyone likes. He's like the Will Smith of the school. You know, everyone <laughs> likes him. He's a friendly guy and you know, he does photography, which is kind of cool, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, I guess in the yeah era back in the day, everybody had iPhones. He was the man. Yeah, Go exactly. Ahead, yeah, I, I was gonna say that they didn't have you know uh, cameras on their phones. Yeah, yeah. I was like, you're. He must be a baller. He must be. <laughs> he must know something. But um, yeah, picking up after that, we're introduced to uh, Nathan, right? Because there's like this scene where the camera just. Um, is outside in a field where like a bunch of kids are like playing football and doing sports and like PE and stuff like that. And a bunch of the guys are playing uh, football and there's this one nerdy girl who like looks up in the sky for a brief second and then she starts running again and we're introduced to her later. But Nathan is the guy who's wearing like this red lifeguard shirt and he walks through the school. And a lot of this movie is a lot of these long one shots of people, you know, moving through the spaces and we just is, absorb the space that they're around. And Nathan, he's walking through the school. He sees, like, you know, the Asian kids break dancing, other kids, like, going to different classes. And he walks past this group of girls who very sluttily, like, put their finger <laughs> – one girl puts her finger in her mouth, like, <laughs> trying to, like, entice him. But it's, like, a very gross face. Uh, and then Nathan comes up and kisses his girlfriend, Carrie. And there's, like, this, you know, uh, innuendo that – Nathan and his girl, Nathan got his girlfriend Carrie pregnant because she's like, I got to go to the doctor. And he's like, is that because of that time we were in the tent and getting it on? And she's like, no, no, don't worry about that. I wanted to know what you thought about like Nathan, because he's kind of prominent in the film. Let's go to Nelson. I just thought, you know, uh, I guess in high school, there's always like a guy, more or less a couple of like that. You know, I guess he's just that. Yeah. Yeah. What did you think about, like, them having those, like, very long shots of no dialogue, but just people moving through the space? I thought it was really cool. It was kind of uh, hypnotizing or something. Mm -hmm. It really put me in the mood, yeah. Yeah. Now, looking back, yeah, now looking back, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a sad thing because the last day on, like, on this earth. Mm. So I guess this. This, they're shooting them with some kind of reverence or something, I guess. Yeah, yeah, because the movie doesn't say like, oh, this is the first day of school or the last day of school or we're about to graduate. It's just like a Tuesday, you know, fall semester. Yeah. yeah. Acti, what did you think about those shots or what did you think of Nathan, anything like that? Um, I like those shots. Like Nelson said, they were hypnotizing and you sort of like get their point of view, uh, literally. As they're walking around the school and you see how the environment is. And it generally seems like a cool school. You know, mm-hmm. like kids are chilling. There isn't like anything chaotic going on and things like that. And it, after you finish the movie, it definitely, yes, makes you reflect on, you know, those sort of scenes where you just like are seeing the daily life. And yeah. I thought like the music was cool as well. Yeah. And that made it like even more, you know, um, compelling. Well, the music was mostly, like, just classical music, right? It was nothing really special. Yeah, but, like, those tunes, it was, like, a famous tune from Beethoven, right? The Moonlight Sonata or something. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, because I think those classical hits are liked and they are hits. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And you sort of, like, feel at peace, 
it does mm-hmm. have like a peaceful feeling to it. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I wasn't really paying attention to the music. I was just paying attention more to the environment. And uh, I was thinking about like the architecture of the of this school, right? And I'm gonna take it there. Like it's very postmodern, <laughs> right? The architecture of this place is like very just you know distant. It has no meaning or purpose. It's just only here to serve something, right? And as you're walking through the school, you don't see anything that really like inspires you or gives you awe or reverence for the world around you. Maybe there's some like mural on the wall of like kids playing and like multiculturalism. But I, it just, it just made me think about like how I was coming up in America and all the buildings around us were just so very dull, so very like, um, not, not inspiring. They didn't feel like they had any history or weight to it. It was just purpose without, without meaning, you know, function without any sort of higher, higher, higher calling to it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, if schools have like good environment and good architecture, it definitely adds up to like the psychology of the school. Mm-hmm. But also I think schools are like that one place or at least education is that one thing that you can do it no matter where. Mm-hmm. And then you would still have something nice come out of it. Yeah. I mean, you could have a school in a, in a park, right? Like where people yeah. just sit around and study and learn and stuff. But I think the architecture and the environment does help towards the alienation of these uh, students, right? Mm-hmm. That's a part of the reason. But I wanted to ask Nelson, like, I don't know, do you think a person's environment can make them feel alienated from other people as well? Like if the buildings are built a certain way and stuff like that? Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. I guess, you know, uh, in the Soviet Union, uh, they used to have those, like, uh, brutalist kind of architecture, you know? Uh-huh. And uh, and I guess that's part of why those people on the Balkans are su- such, like, assholes, you know? Uh-huh. Right, like, the brutalist architecture just makes you feel, like, de- depressed, right? Because it's brutal, yeah. it, like, beats you down. It shows you that you're nothing compared to the to the society, right? Yeah. But the people also matter, of course. Yeah, yeah. Like, when you looked at this building, like, is it similar to how the high schools are designed in, like, Portugal or Lisbon or where? Oh, no, no, not not at all, not at all. Mm-hmm. Like, nothing at all. It's very, yeah. I don't know how to explain it, but it's very, very different. I think uh, in European schools, it's very different. Like, students can, like, leave the campus with no issue. Like, in American schools, you go there and you're locked down there for like the next few hours no leaving no going to get lunch driving off campus none of that i wanted to know if it's the it's the same in your country or different in portugal you can't for sure you can't but in the netherlands and uh holland yeah you can leave okay and that's for yeah. high school so in high school in portugal like you're there like you eat lunch there. You're de- you-, you can only leave with like a card and and like the card it gives you like a green beep or a red beep. It only gives a green beep if, uh, if you like you had an authorization before mm-hmm. you made the cards that, that, that your parents just like leave you leave. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And do you have like security guards like monitoring the school and stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah. Cameras and stuff like that. Yeah. Plenty of cameras. Plenty of cameras. Okay. Sounds, sounds very American. What about it? <laughs> what about in, what about in Turkey acting? What's it like in most high schools? Uh, I mean, in terms of like the architecture, they are just buildings, though they have like more colorful colors, if that mm-hmm. makes sense, like yellows and greens and stuff. Yeah. And yeah, like for me, in middle school, in elementary school, you can go out mm-hmm. without like any security or what. So I mean, there is security. But it's like that one old guy who sits there and doesn't even really notice who's going in and out. Yeah. And he's like sleeping half the time and things like that. And so it's, it was kind of like that. <laughs> and in high school, uh, I was at a bigger school. And yes, like you could still go out. But just like it, Nelson said, we had cards. Yeah. So we would like beep the cards. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking about security guards because in this film, there is none. Right. And I'm thinking like. I, this film was made in 2003, and I get the feeling that the film is set in 2003. And by 2003, like, school shootings have been a part of our cultural fabric, you know, for a few decades now. So I'm like, how, 
how is this <laughs> in California? Are they that relaxed? <laughs> in Oregon, are they that chill? <laughs> like they don't think they need a security guard too? It could never happen to us. I think that's a part of the the, the underlying like I don't know ethos in this film. The mentality is like it could never happen here, so we don't need to prepare. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think in the way like we see how kids are going on with their day, it gives the same vibe. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, uh, moving on in the story, right? When, uh, John is like leaving school, uh, or at least going back to the car, I guess, to see his dad or something like that, we're introduced to Eric and Alex. And there are two kids who are walking into the school dressed in like camo and black carrying like these large duffel bags and, um, body armor. And it looks like, you know, they're ready to handle some business to go in and get it in. And, um, at, up to this point in the film, because we had only seen, like, John and Nathan, really, I thought they were going to be the school shooters. So when the two guys came in, I was kind of, like, taken aback, like, okay, are they going to introduce who these people are, or is they going to be, like, just random violence? But I don't know. What did you think about that when you saw Eric and Alex, uh, Nelson? Uh, uh, I thought it was, like, I, I had still, after when that happened, I had no idea it was going to be, like, a school shooting. I thought, oh, just two guys walking around looking like, there's some people in my school. They dress kind of some sometimes, you know, like Agent Smith from the from the Matrix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes they dress like that, and we, we make fun of them. So it was just like I thought this was like some weirdos or something. No, don't make fun of them. And I was thinking about like in my high school. <laughs> what are they gonna do? They're gonna shoot me? Kids. I was like, I would do not make fun of them. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's the worst thing you could do. But, uh, Acti, what did you think when you saw Eric and Alex? I thought they were the cool jocks. <laughs> Cause I thought like, okay, oh my God. I guess they're doing like some practice or something. I didn't really realize like why they were dressed like that. And I thought they were bullying John. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. Like, we're part of the, we're part of the school like, shooter club. <laughs> Cause I didn't know it was about a shooting. So I'm like, that's the furthest thing in my mind. It's like the furthest thing. To be thinking about that because it's such a like artistic movie at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, so like I wasn't giving a chance to a school shooting. <laughs> they did sort of walk into the school with like BDE, like big dick energy. They were just like, yeah, <laughs> we're about to handle business. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so far, like John's been cool with everyone, and then these two like you know sporty looking kids are just passing by him with bags and stuff and they say right. like get the fuck out of here i guess we should talk about how eric and alex look um they do not particularly look ugly they're not like geeky looking acne all over the face generally everybody in this movie is pretty you know young and attractive in like a non r kelly way i say this but <laughs> like well you would imagine if you're going to make the film about the school shooting the it would almost be stereotypical like the like big ass glasses, acne, pimples bursting off out of their cheeks. But I like how this film sort of like makes it so that you see that what the guys are doing, it doesn't make any sense because everybody's got problems and the way they got bullied is not so bad from at least from what we saw. But I don't know. What did you think about that, Nelson? Like how the, how Eric and Alex looked, if anything. In terms of um like uh, which one is was the blonde one? The more faggy one? Ooh, the more uh, <laughs> the blonde one? I think yeah. that was Alex. I think that was Alex. No, Alex is the dark haired one. Okay, okay, so it's Eric. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Actually, though, now that Ac Acne uh, mentioned it, they do look kind of cool. You know, they they, they do have weird vibes uh, for mm -hmm. sure. But they do look, mm -hmm. they do look just like kind of cool, kind of normal. Yeah. Yeah. Acting, what did you think? Yeah, I mean, for sure they look normal. I thought they were the jocks and popular kids. So, <laughs> like, for me, they looked regular. And I guess, I don't know, everyone is dyeing their hair, like, platinum blonde in this school as well. So, yeah, they just look normal. Yeah, the, but speaking of the fashion in this school, like, it's very hit me, baby, one more time. Uh, genie in a bottle, you know, uh, very late early 20s. 2000s, it was super early 2000s. <laughs> I was feeling a bit nostalgic, except for a few <laughs> things like Elias's like, uh, flooding pants with the bell bottoms. Like, no, let's not bring that back. Uh, 
the, the Elias had a fucking bracelet that was a bent fork. And I was like, bruh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what the hell was that? Like, why would they decide to put that there? You know, it, But they pay attention to detail. I think that was like a real, very niche thing that they would probably do. And I don't know. I guess. I mean, yeah. And we'll discuss it more. But I do have to add, like, there was... There, there was a scene before when we are introduced to Eric and Alex, uh-huh. which is, uh, where, yeah, John goes to like this empty classroom sort of thing, uh-huh. which looks like a living room. I don't know where that is. Yeah. Uh, but he goes into a classroom and he's, I guess, frustrated with the whole situation with his dad and he drops a little teardrop. Uh-huh. And then this girl comes in and she kisses him on the cheek and says like, it's going to be okay. But I have to get to the, like, straight gay alliance meeting. Uh And then we see this classroom where there's, like, a guidance teacher or something. Uh And the kids are having a discussion, like, uh, you know, what? how would you know if someone is walking on the street and they're gay? Uh And they're discussing, like, oh, maybe he's wearing a rainbow bracelet. Uh And another kid says that doesn't necessarily mean he's gay and whatnot. So there's, like, this discussion going around. They listen to Drake. Think about that. They listen to Drake. (laughs) (laughs) They listen to Drake bobbing up and down. Yeah, yeah. But um, uh, Nelson, what did you think of that shot? Because I thought like that shot was particularly cool. How they were like in the middle of the circle and they were going from face to face, and uh, you got to see all the different sorts of faces in this high school. What did you think of that? Uh, I thought it looked cool. It reminded me like. More or less of like a documentary or one of those, those videos that show it cool to talk about like STDs or something. I thought it was cool. And, and the dialogue, um, now looking back, it was about Eric and thing, of course, yeah. You don't notice that. <laughs> wow. Yeah. How do we know they're gay? Well, they're fucking Nazis. They fucking, <laughs> they walk into yeah. school wearing trench coats. Yeah, they're fucking faggots. Yeah. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Uh, but yeah, um, I don't know if we should do this. If I should go on a rant about the dialogue or if we should really talk about how do we know somebody's gay walking down the street? I don't know. Actually, what should we do? <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's a weird question, but yeah, I mean, you can't really know because some gay people would make it obvious. Right. And then some wouldn't. So you can't really know. And it could even be the case that a person maybe feels more feminine, but they're not gay. Right, right. So, yeah, I met people like that. So I don't think you can, there's a way, like, to say 100%, unless they're wearing, like, I don't know, maybe makeup or something. And even then, there's still a possibility that they're not gay. Yeah. I don't think you can know if they're just walking down the street, but if they're a part of, like, a march against, like, trans people, uh they're probably gay. Right? <laughs> If they're, Why? Like, if they're marching against, like, I don't know, uh, gay people being able to, like, adopt kids, they're probably gay. Like, this is just what life has told me. Like, the most, the mm. biggest homophobes are the biggest, uh, faggots gay. behind closed doors. Yeah. Okay, stop saying the F word. Okay, I'm sorry. But we're gonna be talking about Nazi gays, so I feel like this is a good time to talk about them. <laughs> well, you can talk, you can say it when you're referring to them. Okay, I will, I will. But I have to say this. I wanted to go off on this little rant right here about the dialogue. In this film, it's kind of hard to hear what people are saying if you're watching this without subtitles, right? And I don't, I think maybe the, Gus Van Zantz was trying to say, like, maybe the dialogue doesn't matter or it's like how people actually talk. Nobody's actually doing movie speak. But it was hard to hear at times, but I, you would still understand the relations between people. Right. You still understand mm-hmm. that Nathan and Carrie were boyfriend and girlfriend. You still understood like John, uh, you know, was upset when he was crying about his dad and stuff like that. Does that make sense? Yeah. And yeah. I think also maybe the reason they did that is when I watched it the second time, especially like I didn't I thought the in the last scenes when we hear the gunshots, it's so loud and so echoey. Uh-huh. And I think like the whole movie being somewhat silent, even in the conversation and then having those like just loud gunshots without any music in the background and things like that. It was like, you know, very real. More impactful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Nelson, what do you think about that? Do you think the dialogue was annoying how it was low and sort of minimalistic? Oh, I liked it. It went for like maximum realism. I think it, uh-huh. for, for for what the movie was going for, I think it fit. 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. I didn't like the gunshot sounds though. I felt like they could have been more real. Like that's as somebody who who's heard gunshots before, right? It, the way the movie does them, they are loud, but they're not like scary. Like when you hear a gunshot, it should terrify you. And I wasn't terrified by the gunshots. Mm. I don't. Yeah, I they're was. like an explosion. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but maybe that was because of the time. You know, this movie was made over 20 years ago, so maybe that's why. But, uh, yeah, actor, you, do you want to pick up on the story? Uh, yeah, so later on, we're in the classroom, and it's like a science class or something, and, yeah, there's, like, some guys there, and I think Nathan is there, right, with, uh-huh. like, his other jock friends and uh one of them actually like asks like a question to the teacher about the class and then they turn around and they throw like i guess that's wet toilet paper Uh to alex (laughs) and like alex is mad he goes into the bathroom and like you know cleans up and then we see him in the cafeteria later and he's like looking around taking notes on his notepad and Mm -hmm. one girl is like what are you doing freak (laughs) <laughs> and uh yeah and he's like you'll see and he's like smiling which uh-huh. yeah i had no idea like what he was actually doing and then w- there's also like this feel there's something that where he feels like anxiety uh-huh. like there's like a little anxiety attack that he has uh but in the cafeteria yeah. with, with all the sound around him yeah 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 but yeah, yeah. i don't know what did you guys think about that uh, i thought it was great that the kids were bullying uh uh Alex, right? I thought it was great because he's a he's a Nazi fan. <laughs> he deserves. But at that point, we don't know that yet. What but do you think? I have, we watched it? I have a theory. I have a theory. I have a theory that the kids knew that he was like he was drawing like rainbow swastikas in class, and they walked by. Oh, and like, <laughs> wow! <laughs> so then they just continue to bully his ass, which is right. Which is I have no issue, no no issue at all. Nelson? <laughs> well, um, the first time I saw it, I didn't think much of it. I thought it was, like, really light bullying. So I just didn't... I've seen much, much worse. Yeah. I, I, so I didn't think much of it. And he was... Walk, when he was, I don't know, uh, taking notes on the cafeteria or something, mm-hmm. I didn't think much of it either. I was just thought... I was like, oh, wow, he's just doing something, whatever, I guess. Yeah. No, I definitely realized that because that scene came after after we saw Eric and Alex walk into the school with the duffel bags and the guns and stuff. So I was like, okay, that's who the shooter is. Right. And at that point I was just wanting more depth on the character. And uh, I feel like the film did provide some, uh, some depth when we see more of like Alex's home and his home life and, you know, his family dynamic and stuff like that. I just wish it was a bit more, you know, just a bit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at that point I didn't know, Again, I didn't know about, like, this movie was about a shooting. So I felt bad for Alex, yes. Uh-huh. Because, yeah, I was thinking, okay, he's being bullied. That's sad. But like but Nelson said, at, that's light bullying. Yeah, oh. at the same time, I wasn't like, oh, I'm traumatized and he's traumatized. Like, it wasn't like that. But, right. yeah, I did feel bad for him. But, you know, the film starts off with, like, John with his drunk dad, right? And yeah. Nathan possibly having a teenage uh, girlfriend pregnant, right? And uh, other kids who are going through other drama, right? So it's hard to feel bad for this kid, right? When we see other kids are going through different struggles. I don't know. I mean, I feel bad for all of them at mm-hmm. one point in the film because, like you said, they are all struggling with something. Yeah. And and when I say, like, I felt bad, it's not like I'm crying on the screen, you know? Yeah. I'm just like, oh, like, that's sad. And that's it. If there was any kid who deserved to shoot up the school, wouldn't it be John, though? Why would it be John? Because the principal kept fucking with him. The principal knew he got a drunk dad. You get what I'm saying? No, the <laughs> best scenario would be if it was Michelle. Oh, hey. The autistic girl? Yeah, we didn't yeah. talk about her yet. The goofy girl. <laughs> was- hey, I'm going to get to her. <laughs> okay. Nelson, any comments? <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's, uh, I was just saying that it was cool that you mentioned, uh, I just noticed that you talk about it, that uh, the, um, I'll just say principal was speaking yeah. on John, because uh, yeah, yeah. from from later we, we we also learned that the principal was also picking on Alex. Mm. 
Ooh, and I'm, I'm gonna lie, when Alex shot the principal, I just laughed. It was thought it was funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Do you also did you also hate your principal, Nelson? No, just the way he did it. He said like you can go, you can go. And then he shot him. I, thought, I just laughed. No, let's, let's just then he said, Oh say. man, what the hell? Wow. <laughs> he said, You know there's more of us out there. You know, get up. And go tell everybody before I change my mind. The fat principal starts running and he shoots him in the back. And he, <laughs> that shit was great. That shit was funny. Loki, this is a, we, you have to laugh at this shit at some points. And I'm going to go back to the scene of the straight gay alliance. Loki, when I watched this film the second time, I got a little bit, a bit mad because I was like, yeah, everybody here deserves to die. Everybody here deserves to die. <laughs> Y'all are over here talking about how to notice if somebody is gay walking down the street. Meanwhile, we got real school shootings happening all the time, and y'all are not talking about that. I think that that goes to show, like, the priorities in America are fucked up. We're worried about gay people, trans people, drag shows, and meanwhile, like, our kids die at schools. You know well, what I'm saying? Yeah, but high school kids, even if they talk about gun shootings, they're not going to be able to change it if the government doesn't do anything about it. Yeah. Yeah, I got you, but I feel like high school students have shown before that they can be a part of movements and radical change, right? Yeah. There was a high school shooting in Florida, right, with, like, um, uh, the Stoneman Douglas School with the guy, his name was Nicholas Cruz. He was a he was a gay Nazi faggot obsessed with a big black cock because before he did his mass shooting, he was typing, I hate niggers, and then also typing big black cock into Google before he went to shoot at the school. I, wow. This is a true story. This what? is a true story. You can look this up. That's, that's a crazy story. You want to see, you, you want to see his favorite thing before he died? Before he died, he, he, in, in Nicholas and Cruz's trial, the, he said the last thing he did before he shot at the school was like jerk off. And then, and then walked inside and started slaughtering kids. Uh -huh. And this is a pattern too, because Peyton Gentron, the guy who walked into the Buffalo supermarket, did the same thing. So like, oh wow, all of these all of these weirdos are like obsessed with just weird shit. Anyway, we will get to it, but it happened in Elephant too. <laughs> in the oh man, yeah. So anyway, anyway, yeah. Like everybody, everybody here kind of deserves to die in this film. But actually, you want to pick up on the story? Yeah, so basically after that scene with Alex, uh, we see Elias, the photographer kid, walking around the school as well. And he's going to like his little studio in the school and we see him just like, you know, printing the photographs. And at the same time, we're introduced to Michelle. Um, now Nelson said like the autistic girl, I don't know if she was autistic, but she was definitely like the ugly Betty of the school, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, like, like you said, they made everyone somewhat attractive as teenagers, but her. So, like, <laughs> yeah. And then we see her, like, walking outside the gym class. And her teacher is like, you got to stop wearing pants and start wearing shorts or I'm going to have to mark you. And, yeah, like, she's like, she's, okay. You no, know, she's like, okay. Yeah, <laughs> like, she's like, her, okay. Even her and, voice is ugly. <laughs> Yeah, Aww. and then, like, you know, she goes into, like, we see her, like, being just sad and, and lonely, and then she goes into the changing rooms, and she hears, like, these mean girls in the background talking about her uh, and making fun of her, and she's just, like, changing, just sad there. Yeah. But, yeah, what did you guys think of Michelle's character? I was like, Elias took a photo of everybody in the school except her. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I'm being too mean to her. I feel like Nelson probably thinks she's hot. <laughs> <laughs> and also, like, I'm sorry, but what did you guys think about, like, the whole part where they showed Elias's photography journey? Like, what was the meaning of that? I thought it was boring, low-key. I didn't yeah. see any purpose of that. That was yeah, a racist scene to me. Yeah, because after that, like, we see Alex coming home, and then they go back to Elias showing him with, like, this girl, and they're talking about the pictures they take. Oh, no, no, no. I thought that scene was important. But if you're talking about the scene when he's just in the uh, developing room and, like, turning the can upside down and stuff. Yeah. I, I mean, that, that comes after that, the the scene with the girl when they are talking about their yeah. photographs. Well, but why did you thought that was important? Well, well I'll talk about that, but I want to get to Nelson. What did you think of, like, Michelle when we're introduced to Michelle? Um... 
I didn't think she was hot, <laughs> but uh, I would still definitely smash. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I didn't think she was hot, but um, I felt like uh, a story. Like I felt very bad for her. I felt very sad mm-hmm. for her. And, yeah. and and I remember feeling already in the beginning that she would fit in. Because she she had some beauty in her, in some ways, mm-hmm. I guess, N- not physically. Yeah. Uh, she would fit in with uh, Alex and uh, and the other guy. I forgot his name. Yeah, if, I, I guess. If I'm keep it, yeah, if I'm being honest, like when I was in high school, I felt ugly. You know what I mean? I felt nerdy and awkward and weird. And the majority of like high school students look more like Michelle than they do like the slutty gossip girls. So you know the 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 people in this film are not representative of. The American teenage youth, I would say. Mm. Yeah, for me, it reminded me of like a girl that I had in my high school, and she was like, yeah, I guess like looking from the outside, she was less attractive than your average girl, uh-huh. but she was very successful, very very successful, coming from like this rich Eastern family, very traditional family, to like Izmir, which is like a modern city, right? And, uh, yeah, she got bullied so hard that she dropped out of school and Damn. went back to her, like, hometown Damn. because of her looks. So, Damn. yeah, Michelle just reminded me of that girl, and I really definitely felt bad for Wait, Michelle. she was from the east of Turkey. She could have shot up the school. No. <laughs> east is not like that. <laughs> The way you the way you explained it to me is, like, in eastern part of Turkey, they got guns and they're more rural and more like Americans. And there are still cities, and in the cities, guns are not that perme- permeated. But, mm-hmm. yeah, like, in the Eastern, I guess, like, with the police, it's more excusable. Mm-hmm. Like, and, yeah, but guns are more in rural parts, specifically, because people use it to protect themselves from, like, animals and stuff like that. I got you. I got you. But, uh yeah, as far as the scene of... Elias, like, doing the photography development, that scene came after, uh, like, Alex went back to his house, Mm -hmm. and he's just sort of, like, alone and isolated, and he goes into his basement, right? Meanwhile, Elias is, like, at school and socializing and making friends and stuff like that. So I thought those two scenes together were going to show, like, the, the differences, the contrast, and also the possibilities. Like, high school can be alienating and weird, and you just want to go home and just jerk off in your basement or you can stay at school and you can make friends you can join a club you can be a part of a team you get what i'm saying Mm, wow i did not make that connection like the isolation versus the you know socialization but i guess even unconsciously yeah the movie sort of gives you that showing those two back to back uh, Nelson, in your country, like, what's common for, like, high schoolers to do? Or what options are there for high schoolers to do after after class, right? Like, can you join a team or do most kids just go home or hang out in the streets? Like, what do they do? Uh, most kids just hang or hang just hang around and walk on and about. And, um, but there's, like, stuff, you know, there's, like, chess clubs and soccer and stuff. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But is it like a big thing? Because like, you know, our our sports teams definitely make, you know, that's like a big, big thing for us. Like, is the soccer club there like a thing where like even the parents come to the games and other there's, kids come to the games? There's a stuff, but it's not nearly as uh, important as like, you know, they don't take mm-hmm. sports as seriously as uh, other uh, former, like American and former uh, Soviet states. Mm-hmm. They are very like uh, robust sports programs in high school uh in uh, here not so much i see i see what about music clubs like in my school we have band and symphony do y'all yeah actually that? we do we do have it's a little bit more yeah we do have uh music clubs and theater yeah 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 but uh as far as like alex goes in the film like alex is like a latchkey kid like a latchkey kid is that kid who comes home and his parents aren't there because both of them work Right. And that's the reality for like a lot of kids. Like you come home from school and you're just left there playing video games, watching Dragon Ball Z, eating cereal, bowls of cereal. (laughs) That was me. Yeah. 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 Like that was (laughs) me, too. That was me, too. But I never thought about shooting up the school uh, (laughs) because I was I would come home 
and hop on the phone and talk to girls or play video games or like play basketball in front of my house and pretend I did my homework. <laughs> like that's what I did. But uh, I don't know. Acti, what did you do after school? Uh, during high school, I was out all the time and I was just with my friends around the school and we had like my school was in a very good place where you had the sea, the coast, and there were like a bunch of cafes there, restaurants. So we would just like hang out there, mm -hmm. sit by the water or go to the cafes, hang out for like three, four hours and then go home and yeah, study or watch something or yeah. Okay, so it sounds like you're a part of the next group we're going to talk about, Brittany, Jordan, and Nicole. <laughs> no, so I well. wasn't. I wasn't, though. <laughs> you were part of that group. Let's I was definitely, it. like, not the popular girl group, but our group was just like us, you know? Mm -hmm. We were sort of like, I guess, I don't know, there. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> Either way, the film is told in, like, a non-linear way. So we're going back in time to when Nathan passed the three slutty girls in the hallway. And I shouldn't call them slutty because I guess they didn't have sex in the screen, right? But just the way she put her finger in the mouth, you know what I mean? Her uncle touched her. So anyway, <laughs> we're introduced to Brittany, uh, Michelle. No, no, Brittany, Jordan, and Nicole. And um, yeah, basically they're these three girls who are all clicked up very tight. They're walking down the hallway and they're like bitching and complaining about their moms going through their bags and invading their privacy, and they can't wait to graduate and go to university and get out of town. And they go to eat lunch, and they take, like, two bites of the salad before they start attacking each other. And so the lead girl, the blonde girl, I think, she's attacking one of the other girls because she doesn't want to come shopping with them after school and feels like their friendship isn't tight. And after biting one cherry tomato, they all go into the bathroom and instantly start throwing up and purging. <laughs> um, also there's this other girl that there's the camera passes by who's not in the group she's like talking to some other student like why did you say i can't sing i'm great at singing and stuff like that she's important later but anyway acti what did you think about that group uh this part of the movie was one of my favorites not because of the group specifically but just like the shots mm -hmm. also because yeah the girls were i think they brought like a little bit of humor to the story because like the way they just they were like fighting about not important stuff really mm -hmm. in life and then the way they just ate one piece of lettuce and then tried to like you know puke <laughs> and also like the conversation they had before they're like do you ever get like that little pouch you know right after you eat something and oh. then they all say yeah and then go <laughs> in and everyone is throwing up and they didn't even eat anything and also Another interesting thing in these scenes where when they're picking up food, they show like the back of the school lunch cafeteria <laughs> where you see like two guys smoking weed. Yeah, the cafeteria men. Like, yeah, smoking. and then like also one worker just like working there and he looks old and he looks like he hates his job, <laughs> yeah. you know. So it's sort of like showing, you know, the other staff in the school and other mm -hmm. lives in the school, yeah. which I liked. Yeah. It makes me want to hear like their stories, you know, yeah. like they got an interesting thing. But Nelson, what did you think about Brittany, Jordan, Nicole? I thought, uh, they were, I thought it was like cool characters because they were very, uh, realistic, you know, it's stuff, mm -hmm. uh, I've already heard other girls talk about, it, uh, stuff. So I guess it, they felt very human to me, it felt very, uh, real to me. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Um, Moving on in the story, we're introduced to Alex at house at his home and he like plays classical music and the camera like pans around and looks at his room and he's got a bunch of like sketches and drawings on the wall, old computers and, and uh, video game consoles stacked up. And uh, he seems to be kind of like an artistic kid, but just sort of isolated. And then uh, Eric comes down there and uh, Eric is, you know, the blind kid, the one Nelson said looks a bit faggy. Right. And he like parts, he jumps up on the bed and he grabs a laptop and he starts playing a video game where he's like shooting people in the back. Right. And uh, I got a lot to say about this scene, but I'm going to pass it to Nelson. If anything, you got to say about that. Yeah, I really like this scene, especially the first time when I didn't know there were because uh, now knowing Alex is like a demon, you know, the real demon. And mm -hmm. 
but when the first time I watched these scenes, I thought that he was a really intelligent person, a very sensitive guy, a very artistic person, you know. And I, it made more sense of his uh, of his loneliness and alienation from other people. I really like. Mm -hmm. I also like the the scene where he's shooting, like the Eric is shooting people on the computer. Uh -huh. And I think maybe the director thought, you see, these kids, they're, they're playing these violent video games or so. <laughs> so that, I didn't like that much, but, you know, it was a cool scene. Yeah. Acting. Yeah, I mean, I agree with Nelson, because first time I didn't know about Alex's real character, you know, I thought, oh, like, so nice, he's playing uh, the piano, and uh, uh, Eric felt like that sort of bummy friend that comes to your house all yeah. the time, <laughs> eats all your food, and then, like, uses all of your stuff. Uh, that's what it felt like to me a little bit, but, yeah, like, it was his friend. And now, looking back at it, knowing the movie, I'm thinking, like, okay, I feel like this is a, this is, like, Alex is sort of, like, the symbolism of Hitler, maybe, because he wanted to be a musician as well. No, he wanted and, to be an artist. Yeah, he wanted to be an artist, sorry. And then... Um, yeah, like he couldn't, and then it's not the same story, obviously, but I thought there was like some hinting to that. And also, um, like the way that he's playing a very known song, classical music, usually you would associate that with, you know, wealthy people and plus like healthy people, I guess. People who understand from art and things like that. And later on, when you, you know, know the movie, I think it says a little bit about how people can interpret art differently. Right. Well, I think that's a good point to bring up wealthy, but healthy too, right? Because Alex is the only person in this film who's we, who we get to see his family life. And he's actually living actually probably like a very rich family or an upper middle class family, mm -hmm. right? A family that's doing more than better, if that makes sense. Yeah. To have a laptop in 2003 and multiple computers in the house and your son knows how to play classical music and this house looks like it has a basement and three or four bedrooms and stuff like that. This actually looks like he comes from a very well-to-do background. And you compare that to Eric, right, his friend, he seems like he comes from like a white trash background. So I want like to Slim know, Shady. Yeah, like he's Slim Shady and the other guy is like, I don't know. Uh, John Mayer, right? <laughs> Eminem <laughs> and John Mayer were hanging out as teens or something like that. But I wanted to know, who did y'all think was, like, the real one to, like, put it in their minds? Like, let's shoot up the school. How did they uh, bond? Definitely, you, definitely, Alex. You think Alex did it, the genius one, the piano kid? Yeah, he even had, like, uh, I don't know how to say it in English. He had, like, the, you know, plants. Uh, is it plants? Is that how you say I don't know. I say it important. The, the, like the map of the school. The map of the school. Oh, yeah, yeah. He had the uh, blueprints. Nah, the blu blueprints. Uh, it's blueprints. They had the blueprints. He made the bombs. He said, you go here. I do that. He was he, he was definitely like the, the, the real like super villain. Mm -hmm. Okay. You think it was Alex who put it all together and he brought Eric along? I guess that would make yeah. sense too because like he shot Eric like it was nothing later. Yeah. yeah, I agree with Nelson. I thought it was Alex, too, because he had that triggering motive. You know, when mm -hmm. he got bullied at school, and that's when he sort of started actually plotting, I guess. Or at least that's how they show it in the movie. And as far as we've seen, we didn't see Eric at school, really, other right. than the shooting part. So we right. don't even know if he goes to the same school. Alex... Well, that's a very good point. Yeah. Go ahead. Alex had that, like, you know how those couples, those uh, homosexual couples, there's, like, the dominant one and the feminine one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, Alex was, like, the dominant one, uh, and and, uh, and Slim Shady was, like, the feminine one. He was the bottom? <laughs> he was the bottom, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could see that. I could see, like, you know, Eric and Alex probably bonded over being, like, losers in school, but Alex comes from a rich family. Eric comes from, like, a bummy trailer park. So then, you know, Alex is like really disturbed, right? Because he comes from this wealthy background and everything should be okay for him, but it's not. So then he convinces Eric like, hey, let's shoot at the school. And Eric is just going along with it uh, because, you know, hey, the rich kid is doing it. Why not? You know, they feed me. They take care of me. Fuck it. You know, I got nothing to live for. Yeah. Uh, I, could, I could see that. Go ahead, acting. Yeah. It felt like Eric was sort of like a pawn 
mm. in the story, like a like a headless soldier, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, moving on in the film, after, like, you know, Eric uh, is playing the video game, Alex jumps on the bed, and then they go to GunsUSA.com and order some guns. I, I wanted to know what people thought about that, because that's actually real. Like, you can buy guns and sell guns online in the U.S. and acting. How did you react when you saw that? The song, America, fuck Look, yeah, yeah. Played in my head. <laughs> And, yeah, I was like, well, this is America. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it was just like, it's obviously it's crazy to for kids to be able to access. And, I mean, obviously they can enter the website. You know, mm -hmm. kids can enter whatever website with VPNs and things like that. But to be able to, like, actually, you know, uh, thinking of ordering it, that's when I thought, uh-oh, like, I guess this is not a romantic teenage movie. <laughs> I guess <laughs> there's something bad that's going to happen. And I still didn't think mass shooting, by the way. I thought he was going to maybe commit suicide or maybe shoot only the Nathan. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't, like, going, okay, mass shooting still. I mean, technically, it is a teen romance. You know, there is, like, this sexual tension between Eric and Alex. <laughs> <laughs> They're in the basement yeah. alone. But, uh, Nelson, what did you think about that scene when they bought the guns online? Um, I guess maybe I was in some sort of state of denial or something. I thought, no way they can buy, like, real guns online. So I thought they were buying, like, fake guns or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it's a... It's really, it's, it's a real thing. I sold my, um, I don't even want to put that out there, but I bought, I sold my gun online. I sold my gun online. And I, to a white guy or a black guy? A white guy showed up. Oh man, oh. To pay me $400 cash. I probably contributed to like, I don't know, a hate crime somehow. Wow, Simon. You gotta to make a like murder a- Murder suicide. Woman. I know, I know, right? There's like one wife and two kids who, Probably hate me in hell right now. He probably even <laughs> shot the dog. Probably shot the dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. You got to make then, a, yeah, maybe, you got to make a $400 donation to like anti-gun something. I should, but then I can also say I helped contribute to white genocide, I guess. Oh. <laughs> 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 that, that was too bad. <laughs> that was too far. I, that was too far. <laughs> Who cares? We're talking about a, a movie about school shootings. Anyway, uh, actor, you want to pick up the story? Yeah. So basically, after that gun website scene, we see like the those shoots of the clouds where we can see like a storm coming. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also see like um, Alex and Eric sleeping together, like with books on them and stuff. So it looks like they're planning something or studying, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think, later can on. I just talk about the book. I tried to really look at the book and what they were reading. And I think it might have been like about esotericism or like Satanism or something like that. Like one of those weird mystical books. You know what I mean? Mm. And. I think the film does a good job of like pointing at different things and not giving one cause reason for why the kids are shooting up the school. It's not video games. It's not magic. You know, Yeah. it's like, it could be a multiple different influences. You, you get what I mean? Yeah. I think that, and also sort of like how those things can be easily overlooked by parents and yeah. people around them because like, yeah, we will see later. Uh, anything else? No, you can go ahead. Okay. So, Yeah, and then it's the morning, and Alex and Eric are, like, having breakfast, and Eric is, like, complaining about the breakfast, and he's, like, a little bitch. Little guy. Yeah, he's, like, <laughs> nah, nah, nah. and then Alex's mom says, like, oh, you can go to a restaurant, you fucking, you know, uh, dumb bitch. You white and, trash bitch. <laughs> yeah, and then Eric is, like, oh, no, I love you, <laughs> and something like that, but anyway, so he's just, like, bumming in his house. And then we also see the scene where Alex is watching like this Hitler documentary about Nazi Germany and how they came to power while um, the carrier company comes to the house and they ordered a gun. Mm -hmm. They open it and they're like, oh, my God, so cool. And they go into like this little shed where Alex like shoots it and they're like super excited and they're just like basically trying it out. Yeah. What did you guys think about that? About the Nazi scene, I watched this 
part again with the subtitles. And I got to say this. Technically, in the film, they're not Nazis because Eric says, Alex says to Eric, can you still buy a Nazi flag or something like that? And I think Eric replies like, yeah, if you're crazy. So I think there that is a little line that sort of rejects Nazism to some degree. But I think, once again, this film is not just about these main characters. It's talking about, in general, how a lot of school shootings have had influences from different places. Some of them have been racially motivated or ideologically motivated. Others have not. But the film just puts those little hints in there to different events. That's my take. Uh, I mean, when I hear that conversation, I'm thinking... Uh, we, you can't buy a Nazi flag because you're going to be like uh, targeted mm. and labeled as a Nazi. And that's something you don't want. I'm not really seeing a rejection of Nazism or racism or what fascism. Mm. Uh, I'm not really seeing a rejection of the idea, but rather like just the looks of it, you know? Right. Okay. Okay. I guess that is kind of, you could argue that because even asking, can I buy a Nazi flag? that would imply that you would, you know, want it. You would want to have it. Because I've never thought, can I buy a Nazi Confederate flag? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. But, Nelson? Yeah, I thought, uh, by this point, I got my idea of them, that they were, like, really, really edgy teenagers. I still mm. don't know about the shooting. I, I thought they were, like, really edgy teenagers, and I thought it was really cool. Like, while they're buying the guns, we don't see, by the, while they go pick up the guns, we don't see them... Uh, like pick up the guns. We only see like the camera focus on the on the on the TV playing Hitler. Mm-hmm. Um, I think maybe I'm not, I'm not sure how that means. Maybe there's people like this. It's how they become like Nazis or something. But I thought it was really cool. Okay, I, it's so interesting doing this review with two of you, like one, both of you from different <laughs> countries, and you're all like, I can't believe they're about to shoot up the school. I, I, didn't, I didn't see it coming. <laughs> I didn't either. At this point, I still didn't know. Like, I'm with Nelson on this one. <laughs> this is like such a big like cultural difference right now. <laughs> like, as soon as I saw those guys walk in there with the duffel bags and the camo and the hat turned back, I said, they, they about to have a party. <laughs> like in the hey, beginning they, they. of the movie? <laughs> yeah, at the beginning, like when John walked out and Alex and uh, Eric walked in, I said, Yep, that's about to be a that's about to be a channel nine news event. You know? Wow. So and <laughs> y'all are sitting here like it, yeah, they bought the gun, but are they gonna shoot up the school? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I don't know. And also like because like Nelson said when they when they delivered the gun to the house, it was so normal. Like, how is it normal for a high schooler to order guns and then open it up in the living room? Just like, it's, a, I don't know, it's a pizza. <laughs> All right, it's, um, it's America, baby, the American way. The American yeah, way. I, think, I, th- I think that was just, like, very normalized. I think also at that time, right, we have to think the Internet was very different. Like, having Wi-Fi at the house was a big deal. Right. I don't think we got Wi-Fi in my house until like 2005 or six. You know what I mean? And Mm -hmm. having computers in the house was a big deal. So anybody ordering something online, there probably wasn't even verification. No ID, no nothing. They thought if you have a computer, you must obviously be an adult, you know? Mm, Yeah, possibly. Yeah. So anyway, uh, you want to move on? Shall I continue? Yeah, Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so the next scene, we see uh, Michelle running uh, through in the corridor, and she's working at the library. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, she's, I guess, like, late for her shift, and she goes into the library. And then at the same time, we see a shot in Alex's house where he gets into the shower. And this is Simon's favorite scene in the movie. And, uh, yeah, wow. he gets into the shower. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Eric... Eric goes in with her and they say like, I guess we're going to die today. And then I I think one of them, I don't know who says like, yeah, I've never even kissed anybody. Have you? And then he's like, no. And then they kiss and maybe possibly have sex also. But yeah, we just see them like through the door. But what, what did you guys think about that scene? <laughs> that is not my favorite scene. I can't believe you put that on me. <laughs> I thought it was a funny scene, though. Cause you we were did joking it. about it all the time. I am joking about it. Like, how it, it's so funny that they were just like, you know, like, <laughs> you're about to get some pussy before you go and bust up the school. 
Like, that, that's insane. That's insane. Yeah. But it, it tracks. It really tracks. Because, like, what I said earlier about how all of the mass shootings, they did weird sexual stuff before they their last breath or last day on Earth, you know? Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. makes sense. Yeah, and it's also, like, such a big commitment, like, because they said, that's it, we're going to die. Yeah. So it's like, they are committing suicide that day. They will. Yeah. And it's such a huge thing to do that. Like, yeah. it's hard to kill yourself. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, that's just, like, a insane mentality for me. Yeah. Nelson? Uh, so, uh, I guess, for some reason, now I'm remembering, throughout the movie, not throughout the movie, but maybe during this scene, I was identifying myself with Alex. Mm-hmm. And I was saying, man, if I was in jail... Like for life, and had a, a, a twink, a white little twink, <laughs> like this, <laughs> like Slim Shady. Man, I would do it, man. He would be my <laughs> bitch. He would be my bitch. But no, no, I'm just kidding. But on a serious note, I was very weirded out. I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I think um, this film, how the guys are just so like casual about killing and the fact that they're gonna die, it reminded me of the film Scream. Has anybody seen that movie? Oh, I, I've seen the parody of it. A, a scary movie, right? You seen yeah, yeah. Movie. There's like this the, black guy and white guy, and both of them are uh, homosexuals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scary movie is a classic, but the film Scream, the first Scream, is a classic too. Acti, have you seen it? I've seen it like a long time ago, but right. like I know the story. I don't remember the details. Right, but the main character, right, is like this killer in a ghost mask, right? White mm-hmm. screaming ghost mask, right? Yeah. And if you remember, at the end of the screen movie, they find out that the killers are actually like two teenage guys who have been dressing up as ghosts and killing the other kids in high school and leaving yeah. no trace, right? Yeah. And when they finally unveil themselves, they ask the killers, why did you do it? And do you remember what the killer said? No. They said, why not? Life has no meaning. <laughs> <laughs> they said, why? Wow. That's I, I really like Scream. That's oh really my God. I mean. That's really how it ends. Like, Scream actually is a profound, deep movie, and I would actually like to review it and talk about it, but I guess we'll do it now. In Scream, right, they literally have no other reason or purpose for their killing than why not just fucking do it. And then they, the kids go off on this big rant about it, and they kind of go insane when they're talking about it, but they just make it seem like if something can be done, let it be done. And if mm. we can do it, why not just do it? And that's sort of like the same motive for Eric and Alex. Right. And so, like Nelson said, they're edgy teenagers. Right. So they're watching Nazi propaganda. They're shooting uh, innocent brown people in the back in video games. Right. They're reading esoteric mysticism books. And uh, yeah, they're they're gay, too. They'll kiss each other. Fuck it. Like they're, they're doing everything on the edge. Why not? Because why not? Fuck it. Why not? <laughs> yeah. It's sort of like, yeah. Why not? Like, because in the story, everyone is going through something and they are not deciding up to shoot the school. Right. Yeah. So it's like instead of sort of surviving high school or I don't know changing something, doing something about it, going to the straight gay alliance meeting, <laughs> uh they decide to like shoot up to school. Right. So yeah, I mean, I think yeah, Alex does have a motive and Eric is more like the scream guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, like in terms of he doesn't really have, you know, the same bullying incident, but that still does not excuse right. any of the behavior. Right. You know what's I, funny? Go ahead. Because in the parody in scary movie, they do it because they're homosexual. <laughs> That's like homophobic. legit. But this is the thing, right? Because culturally, America was very different in 2003. Like, gay marriage was not legal. Uh, you know, people still thought you could get AIDS uh, only from gay people and stuff like that, right? There was like a big – there's been a big cultural shift in how we talk about gay people. And I think that's why in this film – you know, the kids going to the straight gay alliance meeting at school, that was that was something that was very unique to have in a film, right? Having the yeah. two guys kiss on screen before they shoot up the film, right? It was kind of very taboo and 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 and, and genre pushing, uh, boundary pushing. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. I think even having that sort of school at that time, like having that sort of class at school was not common, I would yeah. assume. Yeah. Like, you know, for all the things that people might think about us, we're like a very conservative country, right? Like, you know, sex ed isn't taught in every single school, right? And to even have a gay straight alliance at school, that shows that, you know, California is kooky. Yeah, I know, like, 
all the, you know, gun nut white supremacists, if they watched this movie, they were so mad that these two characters were gay. I know. Because they're <laughs> gay. So uh. they're <laughs> <laughs> they're they're, they're uh, pounding their fists in the air like we're not like that. They're not like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but um yeah, man, uh moving on in the story, I think we're about to go to the scene where they just basically shoot the thing up. And who's the first person they kill? Michelle. That's so not cool. They shouldn't have killed yeah. Michelle first. Oh, and, yeah, they and they're right the way there too. In the right. Part part what'd you say? Well, like, remember the beginning? Yeah, yeah. It's, it, there's like, uh, the, the movie chronologically, it's like a bit out of time. So mm -hmm. when they go into the car and you leave the car, it connects the scenes in the beginning with the scenes in the end. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause we see John walking out and them walking in. And, uh, yeah. Basically, they also have a plan too. Cause Alex goes over the plan that there's bombs set about the school and they're gonna make all the kids run out into the hallway and stand in front and basically like slaughter them all. But when they make it into the school, the bombs don't go off and they just start walking down the hallways and they make it to the library. And the first person they see is Michelle and they shoot her. But before they shoot Michelle, Elias takes a shot because this guy cannot, <laughs> he is obsessed <laughs> with the camera. <laughs> he wants to be the one to document it, right? Like, I don't know. Any acting, any comments on that? Uh, I mean, damn, like, I thought that was very interesting, and, like, the way he would decide to take a photo of them, maybe he sensed, he knew that he was gonna die, so it was like, well, I might as, like, leave one last proof of my life and my art, and also, like, you know, frame the shooters as well at the same time. Yeah. You yeah. know? Nelson? I just thought, it thought, oh, wow, two guys with guns. Let me take a picture or something. Yeah, yeah. I think he was probably going to be like, guys, I always wanted to take a photo of you. Please don't kill me. I took a photo of everybody else in school, but here's <laughs> yours now. In all your glory. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, the guys just basically start walking through the school, laying them down one by one. And they're actually racking up points. They're doing points. I don't know if you guys know this, but the the mass shooters in America have like this thing where they're trying to compete to get the highest total, right? Oh, wow. the, largest, the largest mass shooting that we've had at a school was in Virginia Tech, which is a university where this little Asian kid walked in classroom by classroom and slaughtered students and teachers. And I think his score was like 35. I think the largest mass shooting we've ever had was the Las Vegas mass shooting, which happened in 2015, 16, something like that, where this guy goes into like a... Uh, 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 bah, 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 a hotel room overlooking a country music festival. So you know it's nothing but redneck crack ass crackers down there. And he just starts raining down bullets from like this hotel room at this uh, Las Vegas uh, country music festival and like 60 people get killed. I think that was the biggest mass shooting. But among the white supremacists, at least, what they're trying to do is always try to outdo uh, each other with the mass shootings. And I think um, the one that got the largest total is the guy named Brendan Tarrant. Brendan Tarrant was the white supremacist who walked into a, a mosque in New Zealand, in Christchurch, New Zealand, and killed women and children. And, you know, all the Muslims were, like, huddled up in a corner, and he just, like, shot them like they were nothing and stuff like that. Drove down the street, started shooting people. So I Brendan saw the Tarrant, video of that. Yeah, yeah, that's everywhere, right? So, yeah, like, they're trying to get up the score. And I, as I was watching the movie, I was like, damn, their total is going to be crazy on the wiki page. Like, yeah. they're going to have, they're going to have, like, they're going to be I saints. Th go ahead, go ahead. A thing that really, like, set an impression of me, it was how much, uh, for lack of a better word, how much, how cool they looked doing it. Mm. They never, they looked complete, like, especially, um, the, the dark haired one, Alex. You look, mm -hmm. he had this like look of happiness in, in his face. It was mm -hmm. like so bizarre because he, he, he wasn't doing anything cool. He was shooting kids, right? Uh huh. Uh -huh. He, he, he himself shot to go, you go there, you know, I'm going to shoot a lot of kids. And, and, um, I think it was very like weird. It was odd. He was yeah. a real monster. Yeah. I wanted to ask you, Nelson, because we were talking about this before you joined, like, should they, make movies like this about school shootings or mass shootings because there's a 
chance that there could be copycat killers because some kid in Argentina saw elephant and he shot up the school, right? Like, uh, could these, should these films be made to raise awareness about the issue or is there a bigger risk of causing people to do more damage? Cause like Alex looks so cool while doing it. Well, yeah, that's, that's certainly the risk of that. But, you know, if you're going to shoot a school, you know, uh, uh, after you watch a movie, there's like a thousand things wrong that happen before you even watch the movie for when mm-hmm. you to go to shoot the school. So maybe the, the movie, I think it's very important, but yeah, maybe it had a major role in it, but it wasn't like, you know, the one thing, you know, what had, you know, what had much more impact in people doing these things is like genetics. And uh, childhood, mem- childhood, childhood experiences, you know. Mm-hmm. Damn, their genetics, their genetics are being dweebs. <laughs> their genetics are being uh... well, <laughs> genetics that like for no for like lack lack of empathy and so forth. Mm-hmm. Sociopathy. Yeah. 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 Alex was a sociopath, like one hundred percent. Okay. Yeah. Acting. Yeah, I mean, we already. I sort of like said what I thought about that. Uh, but I agree with Nelson, like, you know, you can understand whatever you want from the art, but there's definitely has to be like something more than that to make mm-hmm. you shoot a whole school. Yes. Yeah. So, like I agree with that. Yeah. You have to watch this movie, listen to two Marilyn Manson albums, uh, <laughs> read Eminem's book, uh, <laughs> live in a trailer park. Like you have to have so many variables that match up. Right. So, wow. <laughs> you have to listen to death metal, uh, read a satanic verse. No, <laughs> even more than that. <laughs> play GTA. Yeah, play, play Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> yeah, you have to, I think you have to have a psychological disorder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, what do you think about this film that might, cause I think you could watch this film and say, oh, this film is trying to blame video games or this book is trying to blame media, you know, for making the kids do this. Do you think that they would have a good argument to say that, that the film is pointing in that direction? Uh, are you asking me? Yeah. Um, I don't think necessarily the movie is blaming any of those things. Uh-huh. Um, I do think there is a like a little bit of blame on the lack of super supervision from adults because mm-hmm. we don't really see adults throughout the movie. And the ones that we see are like the drunk dad, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. The principal. Sort of, yeah, like even with Alex's parents and mom, we don't see her face. We only see her body. Yeah. And, uh, they're sort of non-existent. So mm-hmm. I feel like even if the movie is pointing out like any villains as of why Alex and Eric did this, I think it would be like, that lack of supervision a little bit and not necessarily video games or bullying uh, because they, they make those things like not too intense while at Mm. the same time they, they do it for everyone. You know, every kid has a problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nelson, what do you think? Uh, I think the, yeah, it was that like the lack of parental supervision and also, mm-hmm. like, obviously, th- there was a lot of focus on the guns in this movie. So that's yeah. obviously a major part of it. And, uh, mm-hmm. I would like to give a shout out to that, to that black guy, a uh, tall black guy that helped Benny. Uh, a good, I think, I think it was Benny, yeah. He helped a girl escape and then he tried mm-hmm. to stop the, the blonde one and he got shot. Yeah. Uh, yeah, shout out to that guy. He was a cool guy. He was the only black guy in the movie, I think. Yeah, and I, I was about to get to that, man. He was so like an angel. Pissed, no, that pissed me off. The Benny scene pissed me off. Benny has no words. He's trying to be like a magical Negro, but he gets his ass <laughs> shot down for no reason. <laughs> he saves a white woman and then sacrifices his life like black Jesus. No, 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 no. Fuck Benny. Benny, th- like there has never been a movie. There has never been a time in human history when a black man sees a bunch of people running one way and he keeps walking that way. That is, that is oh. not how we are running. <laughs> genetically, genetically. <laughs> oh my God. in our DNA. <laughs> <laughs> that man had stupidity in his DNA. What was Benny thinking he was going to do? Run up on the white boy and take down Slim Shady? Well, no. he almost did it. He was like close. <laughs> Didn't you see? It was like uh, Slim Shady said, oh my, what, man? What the fuck was that or something? You remember that? <laughs> he said, ah, oh, it's a nigger. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but no, this, I think Benny being in the film, and he's like very black, like the man got cornrows and stuff like that. It looked like he got tattoos in high school and shit like that. Like, I, this film is very white in a way because, you know, it's, um, it's mostly centered around white characters and like, Benny being like this side character who comes in, tries to save the day and doesn't say a single word, has no background built up on him or anything. It sort of like makes this film really feel like, you know, it's only focused on the issue of school shootings because it's focused on these white kids. And most of them are, you know, young, attractive, beautiful, talented, all that sort of stuff. And, you know, the the black character seems to be just like forced into the story. That's my opinion, though. So. But uh, I, okay, I, I have a theory. Go ahead. <laughs> and I might be reaching like far into it. And I just, you know, thought about this right now. But basically, the only connection between Benny and John is mm. the girl. So that girl was the girl that kissed John before. And then she went to the gay straight alliance meeting. Mm -hmm. And then later on, we see Benny save the same girl, get out, like help the girl get out from there. Mm. And also, their another common scene that they shared was Eric and Alex, when they're entering school, they see John, but they excuse him and they mm. tell him like, you know, get the fuck out and don't come back. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we know that like, you know, Benny didn't really do anything bad to those guys, at least not in the movie. And we don't know if he's a jock or not or whatever. So there's like kind of no motive to kill him and they could have excused him. Mm -hmm. uh, but instead they, you know, the, the Eric shoots Benny. Mm -hmm. And I think that mm. sort of was giving that like fascist propaganda that they were watching or maybe, you know, the racist ideology that they might have had. I, yeah, they could, could have excused, like, just like how they excused John. Right, right. Cause I guess John is like an Aryan boy, you know, cute blonde twink running out of school. Yeah. <laughs> and then the, here and Benny is not their type. Yeah, Benny's Benny's not like us, right? So Benny gets clapped, right? So that makes sense. Uh I could see that. I could see that. That's a that might be a reach because the way Eric turns around and like shoots him, it's like he didn't even have time to realize who it was, but I don't know. They say you can pick up somebody's race in like less than a second, right? Cuz that's how quick people identify, but I don't know. Uh did yeah. you guys feel bad for the principal? Uh Acting. Yes. Why do you think he's so hard? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was a, a human being who died and died in a, in way a very that funny way. Deserved. <laughs> <laughs> the way he was running, bro. <laughs> you can go, man. You can, before I change my mind, mm -hmm. you can go. Get out of here before I change my mind. <laughs> I think um, like. That scene was showing how, like, power could be such an easy thing to, like, lose control over. Mm -hmm. Because in what world that same dynamic would have happened between a student and a principal? Usually the principal is the authority. Yeah. And I felt like Eric was just, like, you know, really juicing his power there. Uh, and sort of turning it into a sick joke. Yeah, I got you. I got you. I don't want to laugh at anybody's death. But we have to remember it's a film, right? It's a movie. Like, nobody really died. And just the way it was shot can be funny, right? Like, the way the principal was running and how he got his shit clapped, it was kind of funny. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm not going <laughs> to That's what I think. But anyway, the film ends with, like, Eric and Alex, like, meeting up uh, in the... Uh, oh, we skipped over the part when, when Brandy, Nicole, and Jordan got the, got, got shot up. I thought that was cool. It was a brief scene, right? But um, basically, the girls are, like, in the bathroom after throwing up, and they're, like, talking to each other. And then the other girl runs in and sees them, and she doesn't say anything. She just, like, hides in the <laughs> she hides in the toilet stall. And then, uh, uh, what's his name? Alex comes and, like, shoots up the girls, though we don't see the shooting. But I yeah. thought it was funny how she saw, like, the, the bitchy girls there and didn't warn them. She's like, I'll let y'all have this. <laughs> <laughs> wow! But any comments on that? No. <laughs> Alex came in with the, in the bathroom with the biggest smile on his face. I know, right? <laughs> wow! God, I mean, yeah. yeah, he was like, "I don't need these girls because I like penis." <laughs> but um, for me, what was interesting in that scene is 
in when they were in the bathroom, they could hear gunshots and screaming. But yeah. the, the girls were like, "What is that?" Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they didn't really, you know, pay attention to what was happening because. Like, yeah, also, if you think about it, if you hear screaming and sort of like those loud gunshots, you don't, I don't know, like maybe you don't really grasp it in that second. Let me let me talk about that part, because I feel like in this film, there wasn't a lot of screaming, right? Like in the scene when John runs outside and he meets up with his drunk ass father, his father's like, well, what happened? And he's like, <laughs> John is like, I, I saw two guys walk into the school. He's like, oh, wow. God, this is God. <laughs> like, just like, having, like the reactions from these people are not very animated. They're not over the top. Nothing like that. Do you know? Did anybody else notice that? For sure. Yeah. I, what do you think the film is trying to say by like not having the people like scream and shout and say, "Oh my God, school shooting, whatever," right? Well, Nelson, anybody? Um, <laughs> anybody? I was waiting for Acti to answer, but uh, oh. I guess well, it's waiting for it to become normal or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, for me, I was annoyed because I was... Actually, I said this, like, as we were watching, like, why aren't you calling the police? Why aren't you, like, calling some authority something? And instead, like, John is just there seeing people run out of the school, and he's like, well, I saw these two guys, like, then do something about it. Yeah. It was sort of like, I don't know, and I gave it to the shock of the moment. Right. The way they were acting in this school, it was like a school shooting never happened in America before. Right? Like, yeah. and that's what made this weird. Cause like, John ran outside after he saw Eric and Alex walk in, and he's telling people, don't go in, don't go in, as if he doesn't know that a school shooting is about to happen. But then again, maybe, maybe, John was from Portugal, or John was from Turkey. He didn't know where the film oh, was wow. going. <laughs> he didn't know. He's like, I'm an exchange student from Europe. I don't know. They're going to shoot the school. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, yeah, there might be that initial, like, lack of comprehension. Uh -huh. But I would assume after a few minutes, it would, like, he would understand what was going on. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Also, I think also the movie sets up like that because the movie sort of has this thing like it's a normal day average lives of average high schoolers in america and then boom a shooting happens yeah, yeah. so yeah i think maybe it was in alliance with that you know yeah. but uh you know going to the ending of the film basically eric and alex meet up alex asks eric how'd you do and eric is like yeah i shot a few people shot the principal bam gets his shit clapped and so alex just like killed his boyfriend easily and then he uh f somehow finds nathan and carrie in the freezer in the cafeteria and uh, the last scene of the film is we just see nathan saying well 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 look who do we have here and he says eeny meeny miny mo cat the tiger by herself blah 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 and we don't hear the final gunshot but that's the end of the film uh nelson what do you think of the ending um uh, uh when um it was a little too, I don't know, maybe the director was having too much fun. The way Alex said, sit, <laughs> yeah, sit down, he started drinking the milkshake. He was like feeling himself. Mm -hmm. I felt like the director mm -hmm. was like, yeah, this is, this is kind of cool, guys. And then, uh, <laughs> and then the blonde Slim Shady came and he got shot. Like, yeah. I was like, man, this guy like is a straight demon, man. Yeah, demon time, for real. Yeah, he, that was probably uh, part of his plan too. And then, like he he went he, he went like playing with a couple of me, 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 but I was like, whoa. Yeah, I, I think this is a very. Uh, it was like like an ultra like the violence is not explicit per se, mm -hmm. but man, it, isn't it not? Was it not like ultra violent? I didn't feel like the film was ultra violent. Like if I was gonna make that school shooting scene, I would do Quentin Tarantino. Like, oh my god, <laughs> yeah, I would, I would, I would turn it up a notch. Like I would, see, you would see kids like with their bones poking out of their, you know, shit and heads cracked open, all sorts of stuff. I would make it real bloody. But uh, I don't know, actually, what do you think of the ending? Oh, you're on mute. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I I didn't know what to think. Kind of like I think the ending was sort of giving, like like you guys said, it was giving like a villain movie, like an action movie, because mm 
because not not in the way because of the violence, but the way the characters were acting, specifically Alex. He was like saying these cool like lines where I don't know, he's using a nursery rhyme or something. He's sitting down sipping. And I think that was like a hinting to once again like that power high and that like basically illusion that these guys have in their minds seeing themselves as cool. But in reality they are terrorists. Yeah. And they are like scum of the earth people, you know. Right. Right. And I think that's sort of like getting into the mindset of a school shooter mm -hmm. because they are usually thinking they are, I don't know, saving the world, you mm -hmm. know, getting rid of, I don't know, other people who are, who shouldn't be alive and things like that, mm -hmm. you know? So to me, it was like that sort of a shift into the mindset of the killers. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I don't go ahead, go ahead. I think if Alex didn't have, like, if he wasn't a homosexual, I think he would be, like, very popular with the girls. That's a good point. That's a good point. He's artsy, talented. Uh, Psychopathic. Guy. Pardon? <laughs> Psychopathic. Psychopathic. Yeah, girls love yeah. toxic, right? They love and, those uh, shooters, you know? Yeah, yeah. And also, he comes from, like, a, you know, good family. You know what I mean? He could definitely, like, in... in This is the thing, like in this film, all these people have so much in front of them and they just squander it. You know what I mean? Eric and Alex, you know? Maybe the director uh, was saying, if he got pussy, he wouldn't be doing this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, Maybe. we don't know if Alex or Eric was out. I don't think they were really gay. They were just on some, like, fuck it shit. Like, like I said earlier, they're edgy. <laughs> why not? Edgy teams. Yeah, just why not? You know? Like, or maybe they, they, they knew like they couldn't get coochie at this point, so they just like, so like <laughs> fuck it. we have to have one sexual interaction, so I guess it's gonna be both of us. Yeah, the pussy will do. I, yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, you could even take it there and say, okay, maybe Nathan, when he had the girls in the bathroom, he like really, you know, maybe did something nefarious to them. If you want to read into that. But I don't find sex to be like their major motivating factor for their, for their, uh, for their crime. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I don't feel either way about the ending. I don't feel like it's extra good or extra bad or anything. I felt like it's neutral and I feel like the film ended on that neutral note. Uh, just saying like this is normal in America. There isn't going to be sort of like a resolution where the bad guys get caught because who cares if the bad guys get caught or killed, right? Because it will happen again. And again, and again, and again, and again. So, mm -hmm. I don't know. You could have put the movie on loop, and it could have kept playing, right? So, I don't know. Yeah. I liked it. I liked it. There were some parts of this film that were extra long that I felt like were needless, like the scene with, you know, Elias uh, developing photography. And um, I would have liked if the dialogue was turned up a bit. You, like, you could hear what people are saying, so you could read into the characters more. But overall, I give this film a solid 8.5. 8.5. Acting? Um, nice. I would give it an 8. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, because, yeah, I think overall it does have that shock value. At least for me, it had, like, being a non-American person, I was not expecting a mass shooting. And I thought overall the cinematography was good. Music was, like, good. Acting was overall good. Because teenagers are already weird, you know, so it doesn't really matter if their acting is weird as well. And it just felt like very realistic and it, it does discuss like an important topic. So yeah. All right. Nelson? Yeah, I'll give it a, I'll give it a nine. I really like this, I really like this movie. It's one of my, uh, top 100 of favorite movies. Okay. I really like the ending, the shooting stuff. It was really cool. Yeah, I love this movie. Nice, nice. All right. Well, this has been episode 81 of Simon and Acting Movie Reviews. Big shout out to Nelson for having this film be one that we requested. And uh, having this one that we be reviewed that he requested. And listen, for anybody else out there, you want to film, you have a film you want us to discuss, you can join us on X and talk about it with us. Just put it in the comments, put it in the chat, and we'll try to get to it. Y'all be easy out there, and peace.